Hey everyone, Malhar here from Before and After Tennis. Bad information and a misunderstanding of three main factors is messing with the forehands of players all over the world. This bad information is hearing concepts like the whip effect or to slap the forehand or flick the wrist. And it also relates to concepts and ideas like come around the side of the ball or come over the ball. And if you stick around to the end, we'll actually show you a club slash recreational player who's been using tangential concepts to this. So these ideas really have no basis in quality stroke production, and that's because they don't take into account three main aspects. The first is how long the ball is actually in contact. In technical tennis, Rod Cross and Crawford Lindsay write, a tennis ball bouncing off a tennis court spends about four milliseconds in contact with the court. It takes slightly longer to bounce off the strings, about five milliseconds because the strings are softer than a court and take a little longer to stretch and return to their original shape. Five milliseconds. That's how long a ball is actually in contact with the strings for. To give you an indication of how quick that is, if you watch my eyes and I blink, that took roughly 100 milliseconds. Now think about 5 milliseconds. Think about how fast that is and for how short a period of time the ball is actually in contact with the strings. How does that apply to us? Well, if you're using your wrist like a whip or if you're trying to come around the side of the ball, your racket face is flying all over the place. You have no control of where you're aligning those strings. How can you be aware of where it's facing at the contact if you're using it like a whip? The second idea is that the tennis court from the center is only 19.6 degrees wide. Vic Braden, I believe, was the first person to do these calculations but the tennis court is insanely narrow. You don't have a lot of space to play around with. If you're messing around with your wrist and letting it lead the swing on your forehand side, you do not know where those strings are going to be facing at the contact. Wouldn't it make more sense to track the strings outwards towards the target for a long period of time, as opposed to having them fold across your body too soon? And the third is the idea of a hitting zone. A hitting zone is just the amount of time that your strings face the target. On all shots except serves and overheads, you want to have a long hitting zone. And now we kind of layer on the ideas on top of each other. The ball is only in contact with the strings for about five milliseconds. Then you need to factor in that the cord is incredibly narrow. All of that leads us to this idea of having a long hitting zone on your strokes. If the ball will always go where the strings are facing and it's only in contact with the strings for five milliseconds, wouldn't it make more sense to track the strings outwards to the target for a long period of time to give yourself the best chance of getting the ball towards the target? Keeping in mind as well that the court is only 19.6 degrees wide from the center. So we'll actually take a look at Nadal and Alcarez's forehands side by side to show you that they really honor these principles when they are hitting their forehands well. A big shout out to Slow Mo Tennis for allowing me to use their footage. They are an amazing channel. Please check them out. The link will be in my description. Okay, so let's watch it together. So great that they have been mirrored onto each other and they've also been sequence so that both players are hitting the ball at the same time. So let's chat about the first aspect, which is five milliseconds. That's how long the ball is actually in contact with the strings. So as we approach the contact here, you'll notice how quickly that ball essentially comes off the strings. Five milliseconds. That's really how long it's on the strings. Players often see this end part here when the wrist or the hand rolls over and they think, well, that's what I need to do in the swing because that's how the pros are hitting it. But if you really slow it down, I want you to start paying attention to what the strings are doing before, during, 
and after the contact because you can see that these players are honoring the 19.6 degrees fairly well and I'll show you what I mean by that. They have long hitting zones and their strings track towards the target. So if we look at their racket faces here, they're roughly facing the target. Again, keep in mind how narrow the court is. You want those strings facing the target for a long period of time. The ball is gone. Five milliseconds, right? Regardless of that, the strings are still tracking outwards to the target. And I'm not saying that players at a high level can verbalize and say that the court is only 19.6 degrees, which is why I'm tracking the strings outwards to the target. What I am saying is that they've been trained the right way so that the strings track outwards to the target and then they fold over. What I see really often is players have a misunderstanding of what goes on here before, during the contact, and after. We can even create a box here. So if we create a box, we can see that roughly from here to here, Alcarez's strings will be facing out to the target. So it's not that he could hit maybe in that box, but he could potentially hit the ball anywhere here in this green box and the ball will still go where he intends it to. There's no magic or mystery to it. The ball will always go where the strings are facing. So that's what it means to have a long hitting zone. If we look at even Nadal, I know the image is a little bit blurry, but before contact, look at where his strings are aligned. They're aligned towards the target at contact and even beyond contact. Only here they're starting to turn you need to have a long hitting zone where the strings face the target for a long period of time to play this game at a high level. Now the hand can only travel so far outwards here, which is why it has to start folding over. But you need to get the feeling of really extending the strings outwards to the target, not leading with the wrist. Let's focus in on what the wrist is really doing. You'll see that as the segments start to unwind, the players are pushing against the ground, they're lifting a little bit, their hips are turning, the trunk, then their shoulder, then the hand starts moving forward and they have created this quote unquote lagged position. Just watch how Essentially, that position is set in stone. It doesn't change much. It's even more extreme because the racket's moving faster, so the lag has increased by a little bit. But really, in the hitting zone, this is the position that you want to have here. You don't want to be leading the swing with the wrist, using it like a whip or trying to come around the side of the ball or slapping the ball with your wrist. You just want to learn to unwind the segments from the ground upwards and have long extension outwards to the target for eventually you have to fold over across your body. And now we're looking at this club player. So thank you, Mark, for being kind enough to share your footage with us. And I really want to focus in on this forehand here. I know the contact is a little bit late, but that's not what we're going to assess. What we're going to assess is this is where the most important aspect of the swing is. But you can see that Mark here thinks that he's imparting topspin on the ball by the way he finishes his hand after the contact. But keep in mind what we spoke about. The ball is only in contact with the strings for five milliseconds. That ball is gone, yet Mark might be thinking that he's imparting topspin by rolling his hand across in this manner. Now I actually asked Mark what he thinks is happening. And he told me that intuitively he thinks he's imparting revolutions on the ball. But that's not the physical reality. That's not what actually happens at the contact. The ball is gone. It's no use doing that at the end. So there you go, everyone. Hope that made sense. Hope that helps you to hit your forehand more consistently and towards your target. Just to summarize the main aspects of this video, five milliseconds, that's it. That's how long you have to make contact with the ball, roughly. Then also keep in mind that the court is 19.6 degrees wide. And the last part is you need to have a long hitting zone to play this game well. There's no way around it. Yes, there will be minor differences with what the pros are doing on the ATP and 
WTA Tour, but there's no real way around it. If you slow down 99% of players, they have long hitting zones where the strings face the target for a long period of time. Otherwise, it would be so difficult to get your ball consistently in the court and towards your target. I hope that all made sense. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you all soon.